Hello, ladies. Welcome to another episode of Women of Grace. I have Sherry Leonard with me here. Sherry, uh, why don't you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself? So, as Alexis said, I'm Sherry Leonard, and I've been going to Grace for 27 something years. Um, been married to Tim Leonard, who most of you know, for 34 years. We have two grown kids and two uh, unbelievably fantastic grandchildren. So, we're pretty. Um, I keep busy with a second career, uh, retired from pharma a couple years back, and now enjoying a wonderful second career in social work, uh, doing social work with families involved with um, the child welfare system and uh, also doing outpatient counseling down in Bloomington. So enjoying all of that. So that's it in a nutshell. Thank you for sharing. Your grandbabies are so adorable. <laughs> They're so cute. I just love all the photos I see online. But anyway, that's a side note for everyone. Um, <laughs> So Sherry, I know you just had a birthday in June, so happy belated birthday. And I understand you also had a spiritual 36th birthday in May as a Christian. So congratulations, happy Christian birthday. Um, what reflections would you want to share about this long journey you've been on with the Lord? I guess that, that the, one of the big points would be it has been a long journey. And I've been now well, you know, been a Christian a lot, lot longer than I've been a non-Christian. I didn't become a Christian until I was 21. So there was a long period of not being a Christian. But um, so it has been this long, long up and down journey with the Lord and uh, full of, you know, lots of, lots and lots. Lots of times where he has dug me out of the pits that I jumped in, you know, and to see his faithfulness to me and to see his steadfastness to me, no matter, you know, sort of what I had chosen to do. I think I would say, you know, I have probably done all of the worst possible things a middle class working outside the home suburban woman could do that anybody could think of and um you know and and to to have to see where he's brought me today in terms of redeeming all of that and healing all of that um it's just really so much joy in that um up and down journey is, you know, and that doesn't mean that it was necessarily easy. Like some, sometimes when as a Christian, we do those Christianese things and talk about joy and stuff like that. I think people think that we're putting on a face. And sometimes I feel like, you know, people think I'm putting on a face, but it's, it's legit. I'm overjoyed with all that the, the Lord has done to, um, sort of saved me from myself. So um, I've also learned like, he's the answer to every question. Yeah. He's the solution to every problem. He is, you know, he is all there really is that matters in life in the end. Um, there's this old joke in Sunday school where they, you know, the, the little kids, you know, in Sunday school and, you know, the teacher says, you know, it's gray and has a bushy tail and it eats nuts and lives in a tree. And, you know, the child says, honestly, it sounds like a squirrel, but we're in Sunday school. So the answer must be Jesus. I was just and thinking that too. When you were saying the answer is Jesus, I was like, all the Sunday school kids, they have the right answer for this question now. <laughs> so it's Jesus. But like, the answer is still always Jesus. He's the squirrel maker, you know, That's like true. in the end, the answer is always him. You know, the answer is always that relationship, you know, that keeps me going. Um, and that's hard in a way that's hard, I guess, because I want to give that answer to everybody and, you know, Christian or non, so non-Christians aren't always that open to it, but even non-Christians aren't always open to the answer always being Jesus. You know, it's kind of like that. There's this book, um, The Purpose Driven Life. Yes. And the first sentence in it is, it's not about you. Well, I think it actually 
is about me in a way. It's about me and it's about Jesus and it's about my relationship with Jesus. It's not about some other person. It's not about my job. It's not about my husband. It's not about my kids. It's not about the world. It's not about the people who are posting on Facebook. It's not about the pandemic. It's about me and Jesus and how are we going to journey together and how much am I going to choose the higher road that he desires for me, that he set out for me in his word how much am I going to choose that versus the lower journey the you know, the one that that's my flesh, what my flesh wants to do. The and one that's, that's the more other... about you. Yeah, right. Right. The one that's a lot more about me about doing what I want to do. So, um, so that's what I love too about the journey is that he's constantly in this gentle way correcting me, you know, in just the way I can tolerate, he's correcting me, you know, and taking me along on, on a new journey, never, never giving up. Obviously he never gives up. That's not in his nature, but also, um, just keeping going, keep introducing new things, you know, for me to, to pursue, in my relationship with him. So this is it, you know, that I love it that I've been with him so long. And um, yeah, I just want this for everybody. And it's really hard to watch people struggle and know that there's an answer right there. And yeah, like, it's so clear as day to us to like, see other people struggling with it. It's it's hard because it's like, why, why can't you see what I see? Like yeah. the answer is Jesus. Those kids in Sunday school do get it. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. It's especially become really hard too, because I do with doing therapy now, mm-hmm. you know, is, is the, you know, and, and some clients part of the, you know, the process of connecting with the client is asking them some very specific questions about what their spiritual goals are and how has your spiritual life played into your mental health issues and how has your mental health in- issues played into your spiritual, ha- your spiritual life. And so it's not a, not a small thing that we explore with clients when we're um, getting to know them and getting to understand why they've come for help. And um, so I know clients, whether they have spiritual goals along with our mental health goals or whether they don't. And I have about half and half of clients who do want to pursue it on a spiritual vein. And even though I work for Catholic charities uh, and those who want to pursue it just on a completely secular vein, and it's so hard to watch the secular ones, you know, try to find hope and strength and, you know, desire for change without the benefit of Christ. Like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. how. how, Yeah. It's so hard. I think like, I remember at the beginning of this pandemic, I was thinking like, wow, this is so hard, but I'm so glad I have Jesus. Like I can't, you know, imagine how it must be for those who who don't have that, who don't see that as an answer because where do you find your hope? I don't know. It's like, and thank you God for all the hope you give us. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Truth. So true. But you said something about uh, when you would pursue God and the, the avenues that he would lead you in. So how did you, how were you able to experience him differently when you were able to do that, when you like pursued what he was giving you, when you obeyed him in that light, in that vein? On the, on the three occasions in the last yeah, right. seven years, you mean? Yeah, yeah. And in the last 34 years, the three times you listened to God, can you tell me how that was? <laughs> <laughs> well, honestly, really, I, I made a joke about three, but not if I really think about it, honestly, I think there are really only three times when I think that I like was hearing distinctly from God a command to do something. And one was a time many years ago when we lived in Arizona, I was in a women's Bible study and somebody was sharing a prayer request about some pain that they were having in their leg. And the Lord was saying to me, put your hands on her and pray for her. And I was like, no, Lord, she's going to think that that's weird. And I'm not saying that he was going to heal her through me but I know that could have been a blessing for her to have my warm hands on 
her painful leg and like, but I said no. And that stuck with me. So I have a very vivid memory of him being very clear with me. Mm -hmm. And then another time was I was in a Bible study with actually Anita Stearns um, and and great lady and Debbie Bauer, also a also great, great lady. lady who's no longer with us anymore, but we were in a Bible study and it was this very intense sort of soul searching Bible study. And I very clearly heard the Lord told me, quit your job in that, when wow. I was doing that Bible study. And I was like, uh, no, uh, I don't know. Like, if you want me to, I need to see what the next step is going to okay. be. I think that's the smart thing to do. Like, what's the next um, job that I'm going for? Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Show me the plan, Lord, and then mm-hmm. I'll do it. Right. And the funny thing was I told Kenny Stearns that, you know, I don't, I can't remember how, but I, I, I can remember standing there in the, in the, it was in the NetCong um, auditorium. And I told Kenny Stearns that I, had, you know, sort of, that's the word I had received from the Lord. And Kenny was like, and you're not going to do that? Like, he was like, utterly appalled. I was like, no, Kenny, I'm not going to do that. I don't know what job I would have after that. And I made all sorts of excuses to him. Now I see, of course, that the Lord would have, would have provided. So, but then the third time that I can remember distinctly hearing from the Lord, you know, I had had, you know, long career in pharmaceuticals and you know, at one point I was working for Pfizer and kind of the vibe you really get from Pfizer somehow or from the Lord, obviously, you know, but he used Pfizer to carry it through was that like this whole concept of ageism, like at some point in these highly technical, you know, very um, business, you know, I'll savvy or whatever, where there's lots of people pretending to be things that they aren't. Right. Um, in that environment, age becomes a real um, deficit for you. And I was like, I'm not going to solve that. So I was like, what could I do where age is an asset? So um, at that point, I decided like, you know, and I'd done some, I'm, I'm involved as a lay counselor at Grace. And so we had a year of training before we started doing that. And I was like, oh, hey, this really seems like kind of what God is doing. Um, You know, I thought I'd be really bad at it. And I thought I didn't really like people that well to be able to do this. Yep, yep. (laughs) And and the Lord showed me, gave me a great love for people in a very different way than I'd ever experienced before. So I was like, this seems like something he's doing. So that's almost like he equips the called. Yes. Weird. Right? (laughs) Crazy. Um, and, uh, so then I, my department got eliminated at Pfizer and they give you a big retraining, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, a a big retraining amount of money. So I went and it got me a long way on my master's of social work degree, um, to be able to make that transition, um, into, to full-time counseling. And so, but I wasn't quite finished. And then my, the next company I was with went bankrupt and the president asked me to come to another company. And I was, so I was like, just kept, even though I was, so I was wrapping it up my master's degree. And then I kept making excuses to not go like, Oh, this president, he's never been a senior officer in a company. He's going to need my help, get him settled in and then I'll go. And so I was going and going. And then that company, Company, did a big acquisition and wanted to change their whole management team. So the whole management team had to go. And, and um, so there I was out of a job entirely, but with this master's degree in social work, also had my um, a clinical my, or my uh, license in, for social work, all that was done. So I was like really set up to move, but I didn't really know what I was doing or whatever. And so it got to the end of like my severance from that company. And I was just really praying to the Lord, like, Lord, I do not want to be 80 years old, still going, what do you want me to do, Lord? And so I I woke up the next morning, um, a completely clear message from the Lord, get your clinical license. Okay. So that's what I did. And he provided, like, it's such a glorious space to be in the flow of God. Like, yes. It's mind-blowingly awesome because you see all of the things that he clears away 
and the the way all the he pieces carries that you fall in place yes yes yeah. instead of the struggle that i spent the last you know when he was trying to call me out like quit your job i was like no it's you know this is too great meanwhile he had something so amazing that i turned mm -hmm. my back on so anyway it's redeeming the years the locusts have eaten but just so you know and even serving him even at grace of i think so much of the time i'm the one blessed and i know i say this at the women's retreat so for the last couple of years i've led yeah. the women's retreats until somebody else steps up so if any of you out there want to run the women's retreat it's available the position is available but i but every time i do it i feel almost selfish because i'm blessed mm -hmm. in the service when yeah. I'm doing what the Lord has me to do, I'm blessed way more than anybody I'm serving, which seems not fair. But. No, I get that. Every time I've been volunteering at, in the women's ministry retreats, I always feel like I come away with something like I'm the one that's blessed, even though I'm like volunteering and working it. It's like, wow, like more people should come and enjoy this. Cause like, I feel like I'm like cheating the system or something. <laughs> So, hey, are we doing an advertisement for the women's retreat this year in October? Yes. I think so. I think we are, subtly. <laughs> yeah. If you're interested, please Actually. reach out to me at alexa at graceforfamilies.com. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yes. <laughs> and it's about the Holy Spirit, so there you go. All right. <laughs> but, yeah, no. When you were following, you said, like, it was, so, it, it was amazing to see how God cleared the path and pieces fall into place. Do you ever have like a moment where you were like, oh, this is why you were calling me. Like, I get it now. Like, this is so like clear to me. This is so, why didn't I see it before? Like, did you ever have that moment? We were like, oh, you know? <laughs> That's an interesting thing about working in social work and working as a therapist too, because um, change is hard and it takes a long time and I am, you know, in that role, just a part of it. And you hear a lot about, you know, people in social work and, and therapists that it's easy to be burnt out on it. And if, if I was not a believer, I don't know, how, again, I don't know how anybody who's a non-believer goes in and does this work and doesn't get burnt out because if you think you're the one making a difference in people's lives and that it falls on your shoulders to, you know, change the trajectory of this life that you can see going in a bad direction you're going to get burnt out but i'm able to just say lord i don't see it i don't see what is happening but i am praying that you will use me i'm praying for this person i keep a list of everybody who i've ever you know um worked with and i continue to pray for those people and um, so that's my role. I may never see what you do with it. So I don't often get those light bulb moments, but I rest in the confidence that he has used me as a part of this person's story. So, you know, again, it goes back to, it's all about me because the mm -hmm. times where I see where I say, oh, why didn't I follow him? You know, this is what it's about, have been about the times where I've experienced just that incredible joy mm -hmm. of a relationship with a sovereign God who is, loves me like a jewel. Like that's, those are the times where, I, where I'm like, wow, I really wish I had not been, you know, cause there's the dark side of it's about me. And I spent a lot of years living the dark side of it's about me and, so will you listen? And so I'm really trying to listen a lot more. I spend a lot of time not listening to him and running around, you know, grieving my past, fretting over my future instead of living in the present moment where he can speak to me. So. For when you're trying to listen to God, because you just said that Priscilla Shire says that God is always talking to us. And I would agree with that. But how do you, Sherry Leonard, uh, try to listen to God? Like, what do you do to hear his voice or at least try to so big believer in prayer mm -hmm. and a growing prayer d discipline um huge i think that's huge so i think um 
I've had seasons where I've been better at it. I'm in a very good season right now. And Tim and I have developed this really cool um, morning prayer time out on our deck. Um, so I think that's a critical place where the Lord and I put some stuff on the table and then I can see him easier, see him at work. Uh, for me, his word is incredibly powerful mm -hmm. that when I will, and I'm a big, huge, can't say enough about meditating on the word of the Lord, where every single time I sit down with the word of the Lord, you know, and, and this is what Pat Bush just asked us to do is to invite the Holy Spirit in to read the word with us. And when I really let the Lord speak to me on, on a set of scripture, or, you know, I spent like a year or so studying hard the book of Isaiah. Whenever I do that, that's when my life is really transformed by his, by the supernatural power of his word. And then I just love the way that he pops some stuff in, you know, yeah. like um, somebody has asked me to, we're reading a book that has a lot of information on it about purity. Mm -hmm. and, when, and it was totally supposed to be about something that was going on in their life. And now the Lord is like dealing with me like, so Sherry, you think you're so great? Well, how about we take a look at purity in your life? And I'm like, wow, I didn't know this was going to be about me. See, it is always about me. Yeah, see, somehow. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, he's really, he's been calling me out for several years about the disobedient way that I use food. And that's one thing. There are many disobedient things that I do. Um, and, uh, yeah, it just using that kind of thing where all of a sudden I was like, I'm like, oh, this was about me, wasn't it? You know, I thought it was about something else. You know, that's like the whole master's degree program. I was like, oh, I'm going and get a master's in social work so I can help people. The whole thing was about me. The whole thing. I was like, oh, you meant for me to get better, didn't you? I, I, there was this, there's um, psychopathology. They don't call it that anymore. Uh, but there was this class on psychopathology that like worked itself from like, say the least, what we'd call the least dangerous or the least um, disorderly psychopathology all the way to, to like one of the most dangerous or disruptive. Mm -hmm. um, so it goes from like, say, you know, mild anxiety all the way up to schizophrenia. And every step I'd be like, hey, that's me. You know, everything. I was like, but surely once we get up to schizophrenia, it won't be me. Wouldn't you know, I have symptoms of schizophrenia too. So that's the way it works. So, but he just always at work, always at work. So, yeah, I think you hit something really key. Like he's always at work. Like even when you think that you're focusing on somebody else, or you're helping somebody else grow, like in your mentorship or a friendship or, or even just a client for your, in your cases, um, you're still growing. Like he uses that experience to grow you in this season so like even when you think it's not about you somehow it is about you like god is yeah. always growing us to be more christ-like in our ways and he uses just about anything to get our attention to do it and i think that's just amazing and i think that kind of goes with a little bit with what priscilla shire was saying where he's constantly talking to you it's not maybe in the way we think where we're like you know talking is conversing with words like this but sometimes it's through somebody else's experience or I think, or um, a classes that we're taking or the books that we're reading or the scripture that we're on or the Bible study we're going through or the Bible study we're designing or any of those things, like that's how he talks to us. So we continue to grow and show the world the fruit that God has given us. Yeah. So, no, He's thank the you. Most exquisite teacher. Yeah, he is. He's pretty good at it. He uses just about everything to get your attention and keep it. <laughs> Yes. No matter what season you're in, whether you feel very close or you don't, you're always close to him and he's always teaching you. Yeah. 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 No, well, thank you so much, Sherry, for joining me today and for sharing the steadfastness of God and how he's been just continuing to grow you even with 36 years of being a Christian. <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> thank you. But yeah, uh, before we sign off, though, do you have any words of encouragement or advice to the, to the people watching our, our blogs? You know, I think 
it's a tough time. This is a deceptively, it's, it's an obviously tough time and a deceptively tough time. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, this whole pandemic thing. And so I would just really, really encourage people to pursue self-care um, because this, this is going to have consequence in your life and it'll, you know, what's going on can exhibit itself in lots of crazy ways, you know, uh, anger or depression or suicidal ideation or something like that. And, and like, it doesn't mean that you're sick. If you say, I need help. I need encouragement. I need coping skills. You know, that's available to you through the Lake Counselors at Grace, through, you know, the internet, through, you know, there are ways to get help. And that's what I would, you know, a message I want to get out is that to make sure to get help to, um, for all of us to get help, you know, myself included. I, I you know, I find myself getting angry you know, suddenly, or, you know, like I said, getting, you know, having these periods of real darkness. And so we all just need help and let's do that for each other. Mm -hmm. So, no, so help true. somebody. Yeah. Reach out for help or to help someone else. I think that's true. This exactly. is a deceptively hard time as it is an obviously hard time. <laughs> I agree with that. No, thank you so much for joining us today, Sherry. And I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.